Good morning, Grace Valley. Good to see you all. I hope you have a great week. Let us worship together. I'm going to read Acts chapter 22, verse 22 to 30. Acts chapter 22, verse 22 to 30. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voice and shouted, Lead the earth of him. He is not fit to lead. They were shouting and throwing up their cloaks and flinging dust into the air. The commander ordered that Paul be taken into the barrack. He directed that he, uh, he be flogged and interrogated into the, in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stressed him out to flogged him, flogged him, Paul uh, said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't be, even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to commander and reported, What are you going to do? he asked. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship. But I was born in citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to interrogate him withdraw immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he put he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chain. The commander uh, wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews. So the next day he released him and ordered the chief priest and all the members of the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and had him stand before them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word of God. Open our heart to receive blessing and your word. Uh, pour your spirit on us in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. As we learned last week, the ang angry crowd who had tried to kill Paul Listen to him until he said, Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. When they heard the word Gentiles, the Jewish mob was outraged again at the thought that God's salvation could be given freely to believing Gentiles. They didn't even mind when he called Jesus the righteous one and the Lord. But they could not stand the idea that God might save Jews and Gentiles alike and in the same way. The gospel is this. You may come to God just as you are, Jew, Gentile, foreigner, high, low, rich, or poor. But you must come to him through Jesus Christ. And once you do, all become children of God. The Jewish were incredibly offended at the thought that Jews and Gentiles were equal before God. The goal of gospel is not social justice or social reform, but to make everyone a child of God. God's message is clear that everyone is equal before God. No matter what your race, ethnic background, culture, gender, Social economic status or educational background you have it you have it doesn't matter you are simply a child of God and other Christians are also children of God just like you this idea may be normal to us who are living in contemporary America but it is a re revolutionary idea in many societies especially in the past, and it brought turmoil into the societies when the gospel arrived. 
just as it brought outrage among the Jews. To give you an example, I will tell you about Korea in the 1890s, about nine years since the first missionary Horace Allen arrived in Korea. There was about 10 churches in Seoul, and one of them was a church in Gondangor, founded by missionary Samuel Mu. One year after the church started, there was about 20 to 30 church members, and a person called Song Sun Park joined the church. Once the church members find out that Song Sun Park was a butcher, the church was in turmoil. At that time in Korea, there was a different levels of social classes. Aristocrats were in the highest social class, and the lowest included butchers. The people in the lowest class were excluded from the national census, and they were not treated like a human being. As most of the church members were aristocrats who were treated at the hospital and evangelized by the missionaries. They could not accept the idea of worshipping together with the butcher Song Sun Park and pressure Pastor Moore, Moore not to accept the Song Sun Park into the church. Pastor Moore tried to persuade them, saying everyone is equal before God, but the Aris, uh, aristocrats refused. They left the Gondangor church and started a new church. But soon, the new church lost its spiritual power. After about three years, the Gondangor church was burned down by a fire. And through the work of the Holy Spirit, the arist uh, aristocrats repented of their behavior and offered for the Gondangor church to come to their church to worship together. In 1907, the name of the church was changed to Seungdong Church. After several years in the Seungdong Church, two elders were elected. One was, one was from a royal family, and the other was the butcher Song Sun Park. Butcher Song Sun Park influence didn't stop in the church. He continued to advocate for the rights of butchers and led a movement to advance the status of butchers in Korea society. This is a true story in the history of Korea. In Matthew 10, 34, Jesus said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Jesus is a prince of peace, but Jesus came to bring peace between the man and God. Those who reject God and the only way to salvation through Jesus will find themselves perpetual, uh, perpetually at war with God. However, those who come to Him in the repentance will find themselves at peace with God. It is only because of Christ's sacrifice that we are restored to the relationship of peace with God. It's just individual who reject the gospel who will be at war with him, war with God. But whole society that reject the gospel will also be at conflict with God. As a Christian living in this world, which is in conflict with God, we need to make clear which side we are in, we are on. We should seek to, uh, to be at peace with all men, but should never forget that Jesus warned that if we are on the other side, on the, on the side of Jesus and the gospel, we will be hated for his sake because those who reject Jesus, hate Jesus and his message, they will hate the followers as well. For you, he would be beaten to death 
or declaring the gospel that Jew and Gentiles are equal before God. Despite that, he didn't compromise the gospel's message. As a result, Paul was taken to barracks and was about to be flogged by the Roman soldiers. What, a, uh, what the command order was not a beating with a rod or normal whip. It was a scourging with a rope which has metal balls, bones and metal spikes attached to it. At the time, Roman citizens were exempt from scourge and rods and they were used only on foreigners, slaves and gladiators. Aiders. Jesus was a scourge since he was not a Roman citizen. When he was about to be scourged, Paul used the uh, get out of jail free ticket of his Roman citizens. citizenship. We can say, of course, you don't need to suffer when you don't need to. So if there is a way to avoid the suffering, why not? We can also say that Paul was fighting against injustice, but it is more than that. Paul was using his Roman citizenship for the gospel and his calling. Paul knew his true citizenship was in heaven, but never hesitated to use his Roman citizenship for the sake of gospel and fulfill his purpose. It was even more clear in Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas was stripped and beaten with the rats and thrown into jail. After Paul rebuked the spirit, evil spirit out of a slave, a slave girl who was used to bring fortune to her owners by fortune telling, Paul and Silas both as Roman citizens could have used their rights before they were stripped and beaten with rats. But they endured the beating, beatings and never mentioned their Roman citizenship then. It was in the jail that they, they saved the jailer who tried to commit suicide when a violent earthquake occurred. The jailer and his entire house became believers. Only after that, when the magistrates ordered to release Paul and Silas, then they declared that there were Roman citizens and made those magistrates publicly apologize. Paul and Silas probably did that to take away the wrong kind of stigma that could be attached to the gospel and the new believers there. What is important here is that Paul didn't use his Roman citizenship to avoid the suffering. Rather, he waited for the right timing so that he could use this Roman citizenship for the benefit of the new believers. In order to do that, he even endured suffering and being imprisoned. When Paul revealed his Roman citizenship, the commander came and found out that Paul was born in citizen. At the time, a person could become a Roman citizen either by birth like Paul or by buying the privilege like a commander. Paul's birth in the Jewish family occurred in the city of Tarsus within the province of Cilicia. Although a Jew, his birth in the city granted him citizenship. This is because of Tarsus was designated as a free city by the Roman Emperor Augustus to show his gratitude for its efforts during Roman civil wars. At the time, the Roman citizens enjoyed a wide range of privilege and protection. Some of benefits were right to vote, to assembly, and to be eligible uh, to run for civil and uh, or public office. It also included the right to make legal contracts or hold property, as well as the privilege of being exempt from some taxes and legal obligation. Roman citizens could not be tortured or scourged nor receive the death penalty unless 
they were guilty of treason. Also, Roman citizens had the right to sue in the courts and to have a legal trial where they could appear before the proper court to defend themselves. They even had the right to request for Caesar himself to hear their case. In today's passage, Paul uses Roman citizenship to avoid a severe flogging at the hands of Roman soldiers because his goal was to go to Rome and witness about Jesus there too. He had to save his life by avoiding scourging here. Later, Paul used his right to a trial before Caesar in Rome in order to avoid being tried before religious leaders in Jerusalem who hated him. To Paul, his Roman citizenship was more like a tool to serve the Lord rather than privilege, privileges to enjoy. Paul was an extremely rare individual. It was uncommon to find such an education, intelligent, devout Jew who was also a Roman citizen. God gave this unique background to use Paul in a special way. I believe that God gave each of us a unique background in order to use us in a special way. However, in order for God to use us and our background in, in a special way, we must belong to the kingdom of God and live as citizens of heaven on this earth. Philippians chapter 3, 20-21 But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. When we know that we belong to the kingdom of God, we can live as a citizen of heaven, setting our minds on heavenly things. When we set our minds on heavenly things, we understand that all of our unique backgrounds, our rights and privileges, our benefits and resources are given to us by God. Then He will be able to use us in a special way. However, Paul also warns that even after we become children of God, when we set our minds on earthly things, including uh, and indulging our fleshly pleasure, we become enemies of cross of Christ. For I have often told you before, and now tell you again even with tears, many live as the enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in the, their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. As a Christian, if we live focusing on how to live a happy life, how to live comf comfortable, how to accomplish and achieve our own goals only, how to maximize our rights, privileges, benefits only, for once as that our destiny will be our destruction and we will become enemies of the cross of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, if we don't live as a citizen of heaven, we become enemies of the cross of Christ. Living as a citizen of heaven means setting our minds on the kingdom of God while we live on this earth with the understanding that our background and we all have are given to us by God. Who wants to use us in a special way? When we live for God and the gospel, we will experience a conflict in the world because the world is at war with God, but we will also experience Him in amazing ways because He is on our side. Declare it every day. I have heavenly citizenship in prayer.
the uh, the world will kneel before you finally let me give you a verse from the word of lord in john 16:33 our lord says i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have a trouble but take heart i have overcome the world let us pray together lord help us to live as citizens of heaven setting our minds on heaven working for the kingdom of god and gospel we understand that all we have including our background is from you lord please use us in the special ways also help us to not be afraid of being in conflict with the with the world but be ready to stand up and face that the world will hate us i pray in the name of jesus christ amen i'm going to read the question for meditation first we should seek at the peace with all men but should never forget that jesus wants once we will be hate for his sake what are some of the ways we christians are hated by the world nowadays are you clear on the god's side second what are the reasons for revealed his roman citizenship what are the rights and privileges of having Roman citizenship at the time. What are the rights and privileges we have that can be used for the kingdom of God? Third, what are the things in your mind lately? Lately, what uh, are they about things on this earth or things in heaven? In order to live as citizen of heaven on the earth, what change do we need to make? I want to bless. May the grace of Jesus Christ, love of, God, love of God, Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. I hope you see all you see on at the church. Please come to church. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.